I have been a big fan of Jackie Chan since since I saw an episode of the Incredibly Strange Film Show with Jonathan Ross on the Discovery Channel here in the U.S. probably around 1988 or 89. This was a show produced in England where each week they would talk about a filmmaker who made just crazy weird movies. A lot of whom were known here at the time and a lot of whom weren't. And at the time that I watched this special, which was a year or so old when Discovery ran it, to me and everybody else in America, for the most part, if you were a normal person, Jackie Chan was a guy who jumped around and did some kicks and he was the, the Asian guy in the Cannonball Run movies. His movies really hadn't come over here. He had done the big brawl in 1980, which was the Enter the Dragon team's attempt to try to break him into the US market and that didn't really work. He was in the Cannonball films and he was just part of the cast there. And there's a movie called The Protector from 1985 that was done by James Glickenhaus with Danny Aiello as, as Chan's partner to try to break him into the US market. It really didn't work. Um, after all that, he went back to Hong Kong and did um, Police Story, which was his answer to The Protector and his answer to American style action. And that was a huge success and he became gigantic overseas. And it really wasn't until Rumble in the Bronx came out in the late 90s here in the US that he exploded and people really finally knew who he was. And then you had um, Miramax and New Line buying up a lot of his more recent Hong Kong films, dubbing them into English, recutting them and putting those in theaters. And as far as most average Americans were concerned, those were new movies that we were seeing. And then you get the Rush Hour movies and the Shanghai Noon movies and all this stuff. And he's been a, a pretty well-known presence here for the last you know 20 plus years since Rumble hit. Um, so I first learned about him long ago was a fan, was buying laser discs. There's a film I'm gonna review here, by the way. Was uh, getting laser discs duped onto VHS from this guy in Boston who used to sell bootlegs. His, the Chan stuff was, there was an underground following for him here, but it wasn't readily available for the most part. I think the first police story had a VHS release dubbed in, in America, and a couple of his Hong Kong movies came out here, and a lot of his early martial arts stuff where he was just an actor came out here, but it was really hard to see for a long time. So when I was able to start getting my hands on this stuff back in the 90s and early 2000s, it was like a kid in a candy store who had the gold card. I was getting everything I could. And, and for me, his movies were amazing. They were very, very funny. They were, the action was unlike anything I'd ever seen. And for me, Jackie Chan's movies set the standard for what cinematic action should be when presented on screen. Very clean, uh, easy to see what's going on. You just, the, you let the camera stand back and just be amazed by what the people are doing and how they're literally risking their lives for your entertainment on screen. And that it was really him doing everything. So I got into all those movies and I loved them. And over time, um, time marches on, people get older. And he still continues to make films in China and Hong Kong in the style of his old movies, but he really can't do what he used to be able to do physically. And this has sort of gotten around, that fact has gotten around through the use of, of doubles, which is not too cool when <laughs> you consider where he came from. Um, bad camera work, bad editing, special effects, wires, CGI, all that stuff. Everything that is against the grain of what made him great is what we're seeing more and more in his film. So the last several Jackie Chan movies, it's, it's there is a film I'm gonna review, by the way. There is this, dream with so many of us who have followed filmmakers or artists for a long time that someday they're going to get back and it's going to click again and they're going to do a movie like they did in the old days. Um, John Carpenter's a director like that. He made some amazing movies and then to me he made a lot of movies that just weren't very good. But every time you go back and say, maybe this time it's going to work. That's how I feel about Jackie Chan movies now. I still watch them all but my hope for them being good gets a, is a fainter and fainter flicker on that candle of hope uh, every time. So I told you all that to tell you this. I watched a movie on Amazon Prime called Bleeding Steel from Hong Kong. It's a Hong Kong Jackie Chan movie from, I think it was 2017 or 2018. It's a film I'd heard of but hadn't gotten around to watching because honestly the quality of these is getting so low now that I'm not really motivated to spend much money to see them, sadly. So Bleeding Steel stars Chan as a cop who's Okay, this movie is extremely silly. This is like super superhero, supernatural, sci-fi. It's kind of hard to pin on this, but basically Chan is up against this Destro Borg looking guy 
who is an amazing martial artist and his face is all silvery and sparkly and he's got like the Borg eyepiece and he's got maybe an artificial supernatural superhuman heart and this woman who looks like Carrie Ann Moss you know, hit the Revlon counter a little too much after the Matrix and, and does the foo and flies around. And there's a hacker in this film who's trying to help foil the bad guys. And at one point he's at a computer typing something and then you see the progress bar and it says hacking above it, which I thought was very helpful for the audience. Um, Chan, he's, he's a cop who's was in an, a, an explosion trying to save his daughter or see his daughter get an operation to save her life. And he's thought dead and she survives the operation and grows up and has martial arts abilities and it is incredibly convoluted. It is ridiculous. The sci-fi aspects were just, I had my jaw was dropped. I'm like, what is this movie? Are they, am I supposed to take this seriously with this guy with the sparkly metallic face and the supernatural kung fu and all that? In the old days, the plots of Chan films they weren't incredibly important. Really, it was how do we get him in a place with a lot of railings and props to use, and when can we have 12 guys say, there he is, get him, and then just gleefully delight in whatever mayhem was going to unfurl. Now you see these movies, and as soon as the action ramps up, it becomes everything I hate about action movies. It's so overcut and over camera shake and poorly framed. You can never focus on what's going on. Anything that's marginally impressing is always half out of frame. And it was ridiculous. Like you have these parkour guys in the film who are clearly doing stuff that's impressive, but you're only seeing half their body when they do it. Or it's cutting right before the feet hit the ground. It's just, it's, it almost gives me a headache. The frustration in trying to just be visually entertained by what's going on here. Um, it's got a scene that's kind of cool, kind of impressive. He's done this many times in his films where he finds a really, really impressive location and stages a fight there. Here, the film is partially set in Australia and we have a fight atop of one of the fins, if you will, of the uh, Sydney Opera House. And the fact that you just see a shot of somebody standing up there is pretty cool and that they shot some of the fight in there is pretty cool. But again, the way it's shot and presented is so much of a cheat and so kind of cheesy, it's just kind of a waste to me. Um, it's, it's always sad to me because I think Chan still can be funny. I think he still can do some more upper body hand to hand things and you know, hand jivey things pretty successfully. And he can do drama pretty well. If you saw this movie, The, um, the Foreigner from a year or two ago with Pierce Brosnan and Jackie Chan, that was just a flat out good movie that Chan was in. Um, and, and his skills were utilized very well in that. And occasionally he is in something that uses him really well, but these films that continually try to be like the movies he was making in the 80s and 90s, for me at least, they just fail and they fail sadly very, very hard. A movie called Kung Fu Yoga, which is probably all you need to hear to know you don't need to see it. Uh, a movie with, called Kung Fu Yoga from a few years ago that in moments feels like classic Chan was horrible. And uh, you may be saying, idiot, why do you keep watching this crap? Jackie Chan is one of my heroes. In terms of what he's accomplished in his life, what he accomplished physically, the determination he had to, to do what he did and be better than anybody in the world, and to just get these movies made his way for so long was impressive. So the body of work that he had from, let's say, 1985 to maybe 1995 or 96 is, to me, the greatest action cinema that's ever been made. Um, and I don't think it's going to get topped because of the way things have gone trend-wise and presentation-wise. I still love the guy. I still think he's cool. I still think he's funny. It's just, it's sadly consistently disappointing to see these films that he's cranking out where he or the filmmakers are trying to make it look like he can do what he could do a long time ago. He just can't. And you see this with Stallone, you see it with Schwarzenegger, you see it with a lot of the 80s action heroes who post Expendables experience this big boost in their profile again and interest. And everybody wants just one more Rambo movie or just one more Schwarzenegger movie. These guys can't do it anymore. They're old men. They really should be moving into the Charlton Heston roles where they're more, you know, elder statesmen or they're more angry dudes or what Clint Eastwood does. You know, Gran Torino is a great example of what I think these guys should be doing or, or even the mule, you know, actual acting, which they all to a degree can do. Um, so back to the movie. Bleeding Steel, this has been a long rambling thing. It's just, it was fascinating, like, but also really kind of depressing to watch this at the same time. Uh, that being said, will I watch the next Jackie Chan action movie where he's hanging off a helicopter? 
damn right I will. And I'll probably come back and tell you how disappointed I was. In the meantime, if you want to see some good Jackie Chan, I'm not here to damn the man. I'm here to praise the man. Um, police Story, Police Story 2. They're now out via Criterion. Amazing classic Chan movies. Armor of God, um, Operation Condor, which was the second Armor of God. Those were released in a weird, messed up way in the U.S. where Operation Condor came out as Armor of the Gods, I think, in theaters here. And then Armor of God was put out as Operation Condor 2 or some weird thing like that. Fantastic, fun, Raiders of the Lost Ark kind of movies. Um, Rumble in the Bronx is a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, there's so many that are good. Really, almost any Jackie Chan movie between 85 and 96 is a good bet. So I, I leave you with that. And uh, uh, I hope that one day I see a Jackie Chan movie that I come back to you and say, oh my God, this is the best thing since Mr. Canton and Lady Rose.